It's Missy again. So our next project for our Art One kiddos is the Longest Line Project. Uh, we find it to be very interesting because one, it's a little bit mindless and two, a little bit less mindless. So uh, yeah, why don't you come turn around this way and take a look at what we're gonna be actually focusing in on. So the Longest Line Project has a couple different focuses. One is gonna be line quality. I would write these notes down if uh, you don't have anything like them written anywhere else because you could be quizzed on them. Line quality, this is also called line weight. And all it's really talking about is the thickness or thinness of lines. How do you spell thinness? We're gonna say it's one N. Thinness, thickness of lines. A line with line quality usually has some areas that are thicker and some areas that are thinner. And we're gonna be practicing that in this project. We're also going to be looking at geometric versus organic lines and shapes. Geometric and organic lines and shapes. If you look at geom, you might imagine that this is related to geometry, which is a class that you might be in currently. And that is because geometric lines and shapes all are ones that can be determined via math. What does that mean? It means they are perfectly straight lines or measurable lines. Ones that have measurable distances and angles, etc. very sharp edged. And shapes are the same way. They are perfect shapes, meaning they are shapes that have perfectly even sides and angles. All of the sides are the same width. All of the angles are the same angle, things like that. You can think of these as your basic shapes. A circle, uh, a triangle, equilateral right or what have you. You have a pentagon like I've got up there. That one's a pentagon or any polyhedral. Uh, you can think of basically anything that has a very specific name, square, rectangle, uh, equilateral, whatever, rhombus. All of these are geometric shapes that can be, that the area can be determined via math. Organic shapes and lines, on the other hand, you want to think organism. Organism is like a living thing. And as you might know about living things, we are wibbly wobbly sacks of guts. Let's just call it that. Think of it as wobbly, weird, or ish, a square-ish shape, a circle-ish shape, a blob. So organic lines are going to be much more whoosh, kind of curvy almost. It's not perfect curves. They're not exactly on a line uh, and they tend to be a little bit strange. Organic shapes are also not exactly perfect. So this is circle-ish, but it's not a circle. Or they can be a little bit more specifically shaped, but it's not a shape that can really be, that we can really use math to figure out how big it is. Like this is a leaf shape, but it's not something that we can go like, here is the width and the height and we divide it by two and that makes the area. No, it, it's not gonna work. So think blobs or imperfect shapes. Three, last thing we're gonna be looking at are color groups. 
This is a minor portion of something bigger called color theory. For us, the color groups that we're going to be looking at are warm, cool, complementary, and what were the other ones? I have to look. Uh, there's the split. No, we're, we're not looking primary. at all the really complex ones. Secondary, yeah. primary, secondary. Primary and secondary. Now you'll see more about those when we actually get to the coloring portion. Clearly I'm out of room on this piece of paper. It is good to know what these particular groups are. Um, for now, I just want you to have heard those words and be aware that it has to do with color. All right, so cool. So clearly this is called the longest line project and we're going to start with the absolute longest line. First off, write your name on the back, please. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna have a really long line, but to make this a little bit more interesting and get, break up that space a little bit so that you're not just, here's this massive area I need to do something with. We're gonna break up the space in a, what I think, I think is a really clever way. You're gonna have some small hidden images. Um, so my favorite and I, what I think the easiest thing to do here is, is a turkey hand. So come back over this way. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put my hand on the paper. Now I'm not gonna dead center it because that tends to be boring. Remember, rule of third says you want your focal point slightly off to the side. So we're gonna move this slightly off to the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a guideline to start with just by tracing around my hand. I do apologize if my pencil's really light and hard to see. Um, I don't care that much. I am going to be tracing over this in pen anyway. So yeah, have at. All right, so that gives me a little guideline to follow. You can just barely see it. Um, and I'm also gonna add in some words. I could add in the word love over here in cursive because I'm fancy. I can't spell cursive letters, apparently. I could have that in there. I could have my name. All of these help me break up the space. I don't kind of like the way that one looks, so I'll probably rearrange this one. But right now, all I'm doing is breaking up my space a little bit so that whenever I'm actually drawing my longest line, part of the longest line project, I'm not having to go out of nothing. I have some areas that are that I can go in piece by piece to fill. So let's do that. All right. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing in my longest line. What you wanna do is you wanna start drawing on this paper in a bunch of different patterns and wiggles and squiggles and zigzags and jumpy bits, lots of different kinds of lines, and you wanna come in and fill in this area with those lines. The trick to this is, is you can cross over your lines a little, but you don't wanna cross over a lot. If you cross over a lot, it's gonna start looking less like this line and more like a eh, scribble. So, since it's my biggest shape, I think what I'm gonna start with is going around my hand to start. I'm gonna start coming around here. I'm gonna go all the way around. That was where my ring was. Funny bump looks strange. And I will be going over this in pen later. You could decide that if you wanna trust yourself far more than I trust me, you could do this directly in pen and not worry about doing the pencil first method. But I would not do that unless you trust yourself because even whenever I was doing my example piece, which is not this one, I did another one beforehand to, uh, to kind of try it all out. Uh, mm -hmm, I messed up several times. All right, now I'm gonna start moving into this area. So I'm gonna come outside my hand and I'm gonna start filling this in with pretty much whatever kind of lines I want. So I might start with a wiggly line and then go to some loop-de-loop -loop lines. I might decide that over here I wanna add some drips off my thumb, that'd be cool. And now I have this that I can follow around. And we wanna follow around my word love rather than right on top of it the way I did with the edge of my guy. I can fill in the space of this V while I'm here. 
and I can keep going around. Now, I'm not gonna continue on this one because I want you to be able to come up with your own stuff. But what we should have available for you is this, which is a nice uh, example piece that is got lots of little hands and words. And there's even like what looks like a little tree skyline over here, some uh, other words and lots of different kinds of lines are in here that you might want to imitate. But what we're aiming for is something that looks kind of like this. Here is my example piece. So you can see my hand right here. I have my Miss C over here. It took up a bit more space uh, than the other side. Instead of writing the word love, I had some hearts over this way. And my line starts way over here and ends way over here. But this is all one gigantic line. Note that most of my lines are not super close together. Again, that's gonna make the line quality portion a little bit easier. But where I do have them really close together, uh, I had to erase and figure out how to make that not happen. All right, so from here, I'm gonna start the next section, which is tracing all of this over in pen. If you did this in pen immediately, then you might not need to do this step, but you will need to do the one after this. So I'm gonna use any skinny marker that I have available to me. Um, these ones are just the nice ink pens. This one is just a super fine Sharpie. Um, and for me, since I want to, I'm gonna use a super fine Sharpie. No one can stop me. Ha ha, I am the ruler of my own planet. Let's go. So I'm gonna start tracing along my line in the Sharpie. And I'm gonna go a little bit of ways through before stopping and adding in line quality. So from here, I'm gonna stop and that's whenever I'm gonna come in and start adding the thick and thin lines. So over here, places that I know do well with being a little thicker are gonna be areas that curve around. So I'm gonna add a little bit of thickness to some spots based on that. Now I am going to be really careful around skinnier areas like this. They cannot handle having as much line quality uh, or as much line variation, I should say, because the lines are just too close together, okay? Like don't try and squeeze everything in. You don't need to make every single portion of your line thicker. Um, I left most of this section here alone. I'm probably gonna leave alone most of these really skinny close together portions while I make more uh, further apart areas a little bit thicker. If you're one of those kids that scratches your lines along, you go scratch, 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 like this. Try and curb that, because you can see how this got really jagged and uh, broken. You wanna try and get long strokes with your pen, because it will make everything look much nicer in the end. Um, you can see where those tend to break apart. It tends to look kind of not great. So we're gonna keep going and you're gonna keep going along this until you've covered your entire line, at which point you can erase any of the pencil that is still left over. Um, double check yourself with the pen, make sure that you're not missing any pieces. And that is step one to the longest line. All right, you got All right. so it is the next day for me. Uh, woo -doo -doo -doo, magic of editing. Uh, I have finally finished my line. So you can see here that I have gone over the entire thing with my blue Sharpie. Some of my areas I have added some line weight, thickness and thinness that line quality to. There are certain areas where you can see I didn't add much um, either because they were too close or because you know there's a lot of line variation anyway. Um, the trick is to make sure that it's not all centered in one small area. That way it looks like there's line variation through everything, even if there isn't. Ha ha, we trick people. Um, all right. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be adding in some color after adding some shapes on top. So come over this way and take a look. So if you remember, we have a couple different kinds of shapes that we're looking at. We're looking at geometric and organic shapes. We already kind of mostly are doing organic lines here, but you can see some that are more geometric-ish. Um, but most of these are very, very organic, loop-de-loopy kind of lines. So the way that I want to make that uh, 
contrast is to have more geometric shapes on top. So I'm gonna be using a ruler and a pencil to draw some new shapes on top of my line right here. By the by, if you haven't noticed, I did in fact erase all of my extra pencil because you don't tend to uh, perfectly go over your pencil every time. Uh, forget that that's there. Pretend you didn't see it. It didn't happen. Woo. If you back up, no one notices. Woo. All right. So I'm going to grab a pencil and then I'm going to start drawing on some shapes. All right. So I've drawn my first shape on here and I used my ruler to do the whole thing. If you can see, I made a funny looking L that comes up and over. You might barely be able to see it. It will be much clearer after the next little section. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm gonna continue adding on these shapes. I am gonna use a ruler because unlike my wiggly wiggly line of forever, I do in fact want this to stand out um, and I want it to be very nicely precise. That way I have a good contrast. That isn't a word I've talked about yet. So let me write it down for you over here. And if you have your own sketchbook at home or in class as it may be, write this down. Contrast is the strong or weak difference between things that are next to one another. In short, whenever you have something very different from something else, such as a black and a white right next to one another, they are considered high contrast. It is a strong difference. But if you have two things that are very similar next to one another, like red and orange, this would be considered low contrast, a weak difference. And we're gonna be looking to make sure that all of our stuff can be seen really well. So we want some high contrast. So because my line underneath is very wibbly wobbly, I'm gonna make sure that the line, uh, that the shapes on top um, are very geometric to contrast that organic line. So I'm using nothing but a really nice ruler. Used a ruler nowhere on the bottom. I'm gonna use a ruler all across the top. One thing I am doing is I'm trying to make sure that my lines, my shapes on top are not, how do you say, uh, stuck like one right after the other, we have an example that we found where the line, the shapes on top are just kind of, mm, I'm not sure I like them that much. They're, they're all just kind of in a row. It looks kind of boring. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't like it. I don't like it. Mm. I do highly suggest that you draw these very lightly in pencil to start, but since I have a generally good idea of what I want, I'm going a little bit heavier on the first go. It also helps it so that maybe you can actually see it in this gigantic mess of lines. If you end up messing up at some point and accidentally going outside of these when you're coloring, don't worry about it. We're all human. Do your best to, to pretend like it was on purpose. All right, so now that I have my shapes nicely defined, I have a triangle down here, and uh, uh, what would you call it? A chopped off prism right there, probably. And a big old L, which are still geometric shapes because I could break them down into pieces and solve for their areas mathematically, even though they aren't all perfect uh, shapes with names. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We're gonna go ahead and get to coloring. So I told you before that we're gonna be looking at specific color groups warm, cool, complementary, primary, and secondary. So let's look at those color groups. You will want to use any of these color groups, one per section of your uh, piece. And so we're gonna use three in total. Warm colors, there are three. 
We call them the warm colors for a very specific reason. We tend to think of them whenever we think of hot places or hot things. If you can guess what they are, congratulations, you've beat out a fair number of our Art One students already. Um, so good job. But if you've never heard of them before, they are red, orange, and yellow. Our cool colors are called cool colors for the exact same reason. We, they make us think of things that are cold. If you were drawing something that was icy or like a snowstorm, then a lot of your colors will be in these ranges. And this is gonna be green, blue, and violet. Violet is just a fancy word for purple, y'all. But there's times whenever you're talking about color groups and color theory and all of that, where if you said purple in place of violet, people are gonna look at you funny. So just try and pretend that you don't remember the word purple and it's all violet from here on out, okay? Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so complementary are colors that have that very strong contrast. They're exact opposites of one another. Now, this is only in certain styles of color theory, so you're gonna find places on TikTok or social media where they're like, that's not right. The complementary to this color is actually this color. They're not wrong, they're just using a different method of mixing colors, so like, don't be mad at me for, being, for teaching you the super elementary one. You need it, okay? So our pairs for complementary are red and green, Christmas colors, orange and blue, for, uh, I don't know, the dolphins, they're still a team, aren't they? <laughs> and yellow and violet, like the Lakers. Or what is it? That one, LSU? Mm -hmm. LSU. All right, so we're gonna have those right there. We have primary colors. These are our base colors, we can call them. All colors can be mixed from these. We'll get to that written vocabulary at a later time. Right now, you just need to know that they're the most basic colors you can have. You will see these on a lot of babies' toys for that exact reason. There are three of them. They are red, yellow, and blue, at least with this kind of color mixing and color theory. Um, on TVs, you will see them cyan, magenta, and green, I think. Um, but anyway, so like, again, that's a different kind of color theory. The next, the last one is secondary colors. Secondary colors are made by mixing two primaries. And only two, there's three. So let's look at it. Red and yellow put together make orange. Yellow and blue together make green. Blue and red together make violet. Shockingly, you'll notice that I only have six colors that I'm working with at any point in this entire exercise. There are these ones right here. Bam! <laughs> So I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna fill all these in. You wanna do the same. If you have not got this copied down to color down somewhere, I would suggest you do it. All right, so this is what it's essentially gonna look like. Again, if you're one of our class kiddos, you need to write these down because they're your notes and you're gonna need them in the future. Um, if you are at home, clearly this is suggested. <laughs> all right, so here are my five, I had to think about that way too long, five different color groups that I can choose from. I want to pick the color groups that I like the most. I can tell you right now, um, whenever I'm talking about complementary, each one of these counts as its own color group for our purposes for this particular project. Um, so my color groups that I can choose from are going to be the warm colors, the cool colors, red and green, orange and blue, yellow, violet, the primary colors, or the secondary colors. Out of all of these, the ones that I personally like the most are my cool colors and probably my yellow-violet right here, and maybe this one as well. Now, with our classes in particular, we also have a couple places uh, for, or material choices that are not colorful. So if I wanted, I could also have a black and white section um, if I'm choosing to use charcoal or if I'm choosing to use ink. Um, if you want to do all colored sections, you are more than welcome to. Um, for us, I think I want to have one ink section. Mm -hmm. 
something made out of maybe pen or brush. Um, I'm gonna have one section that is watercolor and then one section that is colored pencil. So I'm gonna have one black and white section and two colored sections. So the two colored sections I think I'm gonna use are going to be the cool colors and the warm colors. Even though I like the yellow and violet more, I think that this will be a little bit more balanced because it'll be three and co three colors in one side, three colors in the other side. And I think it'll look a little bit nicer, but you can do pretty much whatever, as long as you're neat about it, no one's gonna care. Um, so yeah, next I just gotta decide which colors go and where, and that's gonna take me a minute. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so I've gotten started a little bit with my L shape right here. This is where I'm gonna be doing my cool colors. I think I'm gonna do my ink section in this section in the middle where I have lots of grays and blacks and whites and I'm gonna balance that out with some warm colors over here. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I've decided. It's gonna be cool, it's gonna be fine. Um, I will not finish this in time for the video to have a nice pretty version. Maybe we'll update it eventually like with the nice pretty version, but for now this is what I've got. And what you're gonna end up with is something that looks a little like this. And I told you earlier that we had an example where all like the, the shapes were just kind of in a row. Yeah, I don't like the way that looks. But if you like it, I mean, maybe you do you. You have fun, bud. Um, so here's what it kind of looks like. Over here, we've got uh, some cool colors. Over here, it looks like there's just some high contrast wildness with the colors that they picked out. And over here, we've got some warm colors. This might be a triadic or something color color group that we haven't talked about yet. So don't worry about it, but it's gonna look kind of like this. So you can see each section is just kind of colored in. Tips that I have for you are if you are working in a material, make sure that you have nice dense color. Right here, I have nice dense Prisma, but I do wanna go in and blend this either with a colorless blender or with the alcohol blending that you can see in our media experiments video. Um, Whenever I'm working with my ink, I might want to work with a little bit of brush and ink as well as a regular ballpoint pen. Um, either way is fine for me. Just to add a little bit more pizzazz and niceness, um, I might try and uh, have some of my colors a little bit more faded or a little bit more strong, or I might make them lighter or darker because I could have more shades of green and purple and blue. It's not gonna change the fact that it's, color, uh, that it's cool colors. And I can make things look really, really interesting there. Remember, high contrast is something that we're looking for. Meaning if you wanna do like dark colors, don't make every single stripe dark or you will not be able to see it. Over here on mine, I have very bright pops of green. I have probably a little bit more green than I do blue or purple, or at least I will by the time I get all the way across because blue and purple, at least with these two, don't have as high contrast as the purple and the green or the blue and the green. So I want to use a lot of that green in order to make sure that these colors stand out from one another. If I don't look at this thing whenever you are done and go, dang, I'm getting dizzy, then you have done something incorrect. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish mine. You go ahead and get started on yours and I'll see it when it's done. Bye. <laughs>